the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are LA Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio. Hey, welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you to question your career reality. This show is for you if you were are or might be considering a career in the entertainment industry. And our guests provide advice, tips, and resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment. So what that means is that we'll definitely have someone on the show sooner or later from a career that you are interested. So you have to listen every single week. We just, we just, are going to possess you and haunt you if you don't watch every week because this is for your career. you got to take it seriously. And if you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, and listen to any of their interviews instantly or download one of them to put on your computer for all time, you want to go to the LA Talk Radio website, which is latalkradio.com. And if you're listening to us live, you're already there. So you look up at the top, click on the link that says channel one, and then you scroll down, look for the graphic of our show, Question Reality, and you click the link. And there you go. We're right there. We're right there. And this link takes you uh, directly to our archive page. And there you have a whole list of all of our past guests from the beginning of our show from 2008 until today. And we've had some fascinating guests. Great, great guests great thing to do to get advice for your career path. Now, our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section. So you would just type in Question Reality Radio in the search box and you can listen to them there and download them to your iTunes as well. And if you want to find out about our future guests, Lord have mercy, praise God, hallelujah. I swear this show has just gone global. I just love it. I had no idea when I first started this show that it was going to become so popular. We have fans all over the world, and I always get tons of emails, uh, sometimes before, sometimes after, uh, and tell us how much they love the show and how it inspired them. I just had this wonderful guy uh, email me the other day from Slovenia, and I had to think because everybody knows that I am geographically challenged. I'm thinking, oh, God, is it part of the old Russia? Do I, do I have to look it up? But he was so wonderful, and he said that, from listening to one of the guests on the show. It has inspired him to move to Los Angeles. So I said, oh God, let me just give you, let's just take an hour and think about this. (laughs) So I had to just warn him about all the pitfalls. So, um, okay. So if you want to find out about future guests, visit the official Question Reality website at Question Reality Show questionrealityshow.com, which is a different website, has all the guests there. Now, as always, we try and strive for the very, very, very best guests to give you information to help you in your career decisions, because it seems like everybody wants to go into show business, but... Unfortunately, my darlings, not everybody is cut out for it because it is a cutthroat little world out here as it is in New York or any of the other cities where you pursue careers in entertainment and you just need as much advice and tips and resource information as possible. And today we have another fantastic guest. Actually, we have two of them. It is a little husband and wife duo. I've never had a husband and wife duo. It's like the Sonny and Cher today that are going to tell you all about the business. We're going to have them answer questions about the business. My The first guest, well, ladies first, we'll do is a Yumi Izuka and her lovely husband, Doug Morency, or Morency, I know I messed that up. I don't know how, but I think I did. And they are the owners of Connect Studios LA. 
And this is a very bizarre story that they came to be on my show. Um, let me just tell you first, Connect Studios LA is an actor-run studio, and they're dedicated to industry networking, caster direct, casting director workshops, and agent showcases. You know, every single week I provide uh, information on the best casting director workshops, and I stress how important it is to go to these. You cannot, you cannot not go. And I get a lot of emails from actors saying, oh, they're so expensive. I can't afford them. I got to focus on my headshots. Well, that's great that you got a damn headshot, but what are you going to do with it? That's like the musicians who get 5,000 CDs, and then they have them in a box holding their door open as a doorstop. It's just the pictures alone are not going to do it. You have to go to these casting directors workshops it is mandatory so they uh own uh connect studios la and the way that i came across ayumi is that uh a, a friend of mine way back oh my gosh i can't even remember maybe 2004 a friend of mine uh lisa capazzi said my friend is moving from arizona lynn milano and she's opening up a casting director workshop do you want to help me like do some things, help out. And I'm like, yeah. So they helped uh, Lynn Milano open what was Signature Studios LA. And it was wonderful. I cannot tell you this woman, Lynn Milano, the act, the absolute epitome of grace and beauty and kindness and thoughtfulness. I, everybody loved this one. All you have to do is meet her and you just fell in love with her. And she ran that studio so professionally and people, there, they were coming in droves to this place. It was so set up so nice. And I know that all the actors go to workshops that mm, I've heard reports there's little roaches running around and they don't, they're scared for their life and their car gets towed. Well, in this particular environment, Lynn Milano always strived for perfection. She had this place set up. Well, I was I, I came across Ayumi because I was looking for someone I had met in the workshop, Jeremy Scott Johnson, um, because I was going to cast him in one of my short films. And I was looking for him through the website because he bought Signature Studios when Lynn Milano, so Lynn Milano sold it. And I couldn't find it anymore. So I had to do some research. And then I came across uh, Ayumi Izuka and Doug Morency, who had purchased it and they changed the name uh, Connect Studios LA. So it was just so bizarre because I didn't even know anything about it. But that's how I came to connect with, with her. And I thought, oh my God, that would be fantastic to bring her on the show and tell the story and also share about about her journey. So we're going to talk to them and they are going to tell you their journey from, I think, Toronto, Canada. So this would be great because I get a lot of emails from people in Canada, in Quebec, weirdly enough. And you know me with geography. I don't know how far that is. I think it's a very, very far. But people from Quebec want to come here. And again, we're going to talk to people from Canada who've come here and we're going to see how it's working out for them. But first, I want to talk a little bit about, get this out of the way. I got stuff to tell you, as always. Uh, I want you, first of all, very exciting news, everybody. So exciting. I can't even stand it. As I told you earlier, the show has become so popular. People are contacting me, booked until April. Well, this happened very weirdly. I was contacted um uh, okay, I can't even stand it. Guess who's going to be on the Guess who's going to be on the show next week? Oh my god. Pisha McPhee and Michael Orland. Pisha McPhee is the vocal coach on American Idol and the mother of the multi-talented Catherine McPhee. And uh, and Michael Orland is the uh, associate music director on American Idol. So it is huge because I'm one of the biggest fans ever of Catherine McPhee. You know, she's the star of Smash. Uh, she's done Broadway. I mean, America – Oh, come on, American career, American career. Oh, God, I used to work there. American Idol has launched her into superstardom, and rightly so, because she's beautiful, she's talented, she has everything that Hollywood is looking for. So this show is going to be for you if you want to get the cutting-edge audition secrets from two of the nation's leading 
vocal and performance coaches because what they've done is they have formed together because they, they used to work together a long time ago and then they decided, oh, they ended up working together on American Idol, obviously, and they found out they work very well together. So they've started this whole uh, online workshop and they have an online course called Ace Your Audition. And what this does is it, now you can't beat this, this delivers inside secrets of the judging and audition process because thousands and thousands and thousands of people audition for American Idol uh, along with uh, America's Got Talent, The Voice, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this class is going to teach you how and what you need to do to get through this audition process, not just an audition process for a show, but also a lot of people go and audition for various jobs and singing. So, of course, Pisha McPhee and Catherine is Catherine McPhee's coach. And we know what amazing talent she is. And she helped her get to where she is. So these are the secrets, people, secrets that are coming out on the show next week. And I tell you. Uh, they're going to tell us everything because I am going to prod them for all the secrets on what it takes to be chosen for these audition. And we are going to get it out of the lovely Pisha McPhee and Michael Orland next week. So tell all your singer songwriter friends to tune in next Sunday at five because they are going to be in the studio live. My goodness gracious. I wish I could sing because this would have been my big break. Would have been my big break, but I can't sing it. (laughs) Damn it, I'm out of tune. I talk and I'm out of tune. That's how bad it is. All right, so another thing I want to tell you about is uh, I want to tell you about my friend Jim Meskimen. And remember, Jim was on the show a couple of months ago. He is the son of the lovely, gorgeous, um, oh, my God, I'm, he's going to kill me. I swear, I took a, I was so tired earlier and I had a headache. I took a pill. I'm still groggy. He is, the, I'm going to just, he is the son of, okay, Happy Days, uh, Miriam, the mother of Ron Howard. Oh, on the show. Oh, God, Jim, please forgive me i know you're listening i forgot your mom's name and i'm so embarrassed but he is the real son of the character marion that uh was on the ron howard show and he grew up you know hanging out with ron howard etc etc so anyway he's fantastic he does a show called jim pressions and next saturday august the 11th at 8 p.m he'll be doing it at the acting center which is 5514 Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles. And I always have to say this, street parking available. There's a parking lot. I went. It's fantastic. For 15 bucks, you cannot beat it. It's the actingcenterla.com. And what the show is, Jim Pressions is – Um, What he does, he does a whole evening of celebrity impressions, improv and cultural subversion. And he does – he's also known as the voice of Jib Jab. He's very, very famous on Jib Jab. I know you've seen him. He's the guy who – the – the vi- uh, video went viral when he did all of the voices reciting Shakespeare, and then he does uh, – oh, God, he does everything. You'll have to check it out. He's been on Letterman. He's been on The Tonight Show, countless animated shows. And if you watch commercials and you see the Sprint commercial that comes on every five minutes with him talking about the guy that's old with a belly in the – in the in the shorts and he says surely you're going to put something else on that is jim meskimen he's fantastic so he's a vocal magician and he pulls characters out of his head more amazing than penn and teller so you got to go to the show next saturday august 11th at 8 p.m i promise you it was phenomenal phenomenal absolutely and you'll always run into a celebrity when we went we ran into the lady who is the actual uh voice of bart simpson and lord i am the worst with names but anyway she was fantastic too so, all right we are winding it up and we are about to meet the wonderful dan morrissey and Morency and Yumi Izuka. I want to tell you one little workshop and then we are going to get to them. I know everybody's excited to talk to them, but I have to do this. You know, I have to do my workshops every week. Okay. So there is a free workshop voiceover technique with casting director, producer Sherilyn Carter, Friday, August 10th uh, from seven to eight. And you want to go to the actors creative workshop to uh, website to register. And that 
uh, weirdly, their website address is trulyacting.com. So don't ask me. I don't know. But um, a- after, and after you take the free workshop, you're going to be blown away because I hear I've never taken her class, but I have so many actors who have and told me this woman, Sherilyn Carter, is phenomenal and they book so much work. But uh, once you go, apparently you're blown away and then you go to her next uh, set of workshop classes. And what she does is you'll learn the basics of how to get auditions, what to expect from a voiceover session, know how, how to know your audience, developing characters, and then using your acting skills to perfect your voiceover work and so much more. And everybody knows, I've told you people, voiceover work, Lots of money, short amount of time. It is the perfect job for somebody who wants to be an actor but may not like to be in front of the camera, oddly enough. they I have run across them. So that, that might be for you. And remember, Sherilyn Carter has produced and cast hundreds of television shows, Super Bowls, ads, radio, interactive spots at TBWA Shy at Day in Los Angeles for almost 14 years before branching out on her own with Precision Talent – where she produces audio and coaches voiceover talent and cast commercial projects. So you can check all of her credits out as you always want to do before you take these workshops on imdb.com. And the classes are going to start on Fridays at 7.30 p.m. And the dates are August 17th, August 24th. August 31st and September the 7th, and that is $225, which is a steal because divide that into the four days and you go, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to get a workshop with Sherilyn Carter, who's one of the best in the business. And last, last, last is Thursday, August the 9th, coming up this week at 7.30, Actors West, 5818 Lancashire Boulevard, North Hollywood. Actors West, we're going to have Michael Torbiak from Jimmy Kimmel Live. He is going to be offering a $29 cold read. Can you believe it? $29, $1 shy of 30 so it sounds more affordable. Uh, Michael Torbiak has been discovering new talent and working with some of the top names in film and TV. TV at MTV, Bravo, and E for nearly a decade. And for two years now, he's been casting the comedy segments on ABC's Jimmy Kimmel Live. And the show casts principals and under five actor actors on a daily basis on uh, for camera work, voiceovers, plus dancers and musicians. And he brings talent on in a moment's notice for that night's show. So you could be picked. And Torbiak works closely with Kimmel's writers and directors to cast bits for the show's monologue and pre-taped segments involving celebrity talent on a regular basis. So that is something you definitely want to check out and because this is your opportunity to get on Michael Torbiak's very short list of available talent for the many Jimmy Kimmel comedy bits that they cast. So you got to learn what it takes to do the work for late night television, which is a whole different animal. So without further ado, here they are, the little dynamic duo, Ayumi and Azuka. And Doug Morenci, have you fallen asleep yet? <laughs> no, we are right here. Oh, my God. I thought I would never end, and I was doing it myself. I, <laughs> I, I thought I was just on autopilot, and I was just going to announce and announce forever. <laughs> no, we were taking down all those dates and probably going to go to all those workshops and events. Yeah. Well, you know, we have them every week. We do the hottest workshops in town, and you have to tune in long after we leave the show today, uh, next week, or you can go to the website and check them out. There's always, always, always great workshops. Now, let's talk about Connect Studios LA. Now, we know that Connect Studios LA is an actor-run studio that's dedicated to industry, networking, casting director workshops, and agent showcases. Now, everybody in LA, New York, knows what this is, but we have people tuning into the show from small little towns in the heartland in the middle of America whose dream it is to come to uh, L.A. and be an actor. So they may not know what this is. So why don't you tell everyone what what an um, an actor studio is, how important industry networking is within this actor studio, what casting director, uh, director workshops are and agent showcases, and why, if they make the decision to come to L.A., they should come to Connect Studios L.A. So go ahead. Take it. Take it, people. 
<laughs> okay, great. Well, uh, casting director workshops are an amazing opportunity to meet ca uh, casting directors uh, and learn from them about what it is uh, about the business. They also get an opportunity to do a cold read. Sometimes they do prepared material um, and get feedback from the casting director. So they really get a sense of what it is that they need to be doing when they're auditioning. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to also network with these casting directors who are so busy. Um, and, you know, for every breakdown that they put out there, they're getting about 1,600 submissions. So this is a great way for actors to um, be seen by, by these really important people. Uh, we're both from Toronto, and so the first and best piece of advice we received when we got here was to do these casting director workshops. Uh, they don't exist in Canada yet uh, in the way that they exist here. So it really allowed us to fast track into the business, I feel, and, and meet uh, these great casting directors so quickly. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to emphasize that one of the hardest things to do uh, when you are new to L.A. is to meet uh, or get auditions uh, and get called in by casting directors because there are so many actors who are competing. Hello? Hello? Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Lynn Milano, and Priscilla Leona wanted me to call in while well, she's interviewing Ayumi and Jeff Marenzi, and I didn't know what time I should call in. Here. So really a lot of fast track in those business like the As a surprise to her guests. Hi, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hi, Lynn. This is Doug calling. Uh, Hello? Okay. Don't know what's happening. Uh, <laughs> I think I know who your surprise caller is, though. Yeah, I was Lynn Milano, but I just don't know what happened. Where did she go? Ronan, is, is, what's going on? What happened to Lynn? Hello? She, oh, we, we heard her here. Yeah. Oh, I have no idea what happened. That was the surprise guest, but I just don't, I honestly, I don't know what happened to her. I don't know. I don't know. We were surprised. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hmm, maybe we can call her back, hopefully. I think that they're working on that. But um, let's continue on with the show. I think that he is going to call her back. So that was the surprise guest, and I hope that <laughs> Let's continue on. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you just go ahead and t pick up where you left off. Yeah, I was just kind of making the point that one uh, a good reason to go to casting director workshops is that there's so much competition for the auditions. Uh, casting directors get so many submissions from agents uh, across Los Angeles. Um, so, uh, you know, a five line uh, under five or a co-star role can have like up to 3,000 submissions for it. And maybe only 12 people are going to come in and actually read for that part. So you've got to find a way to set yourself apart from all those people. Hello? Hi, Lynn. Can you hear us again? <laughs> yeah, the point of it is, um, I thought I was supposed to talk to the producer. <laughs> You've come directly onto the air. You've come I know, unfortunately. Well, I thought we have uh, Ayumi Azuka and Doug Morenci here, and they are the new owners of Connect Studios LA, which used to be your baby doll. So, do you know you <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, picking up feedback. You took directly onto the air. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Hello? Priscilla. Yes. Please ask hey. your guest to turn off your her computer or radio at the background. That's I what's got it off. the noise. That's oh, it. Thank she you. Says, she says that she has it off. That's it. Now it's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so apparently we're all going to be connected now, and it's just going to oh, work. Hallelujah. It's I just wanted to call in and <laughs> say that Ayumi and Doug have the most fantastic workshop in L.A. They are the nicest people. So talented, and I think every actor in LA should go there. Well, I think so too. Do you guys all know each other? 
It feels like it's a, a family run business, but we're just not related. We absolutely adore the our, our predecessors and we look to them as amazing role models for how we want to continue to build our business. So yes, we do know each other and just have nothing but respect and love for each other. And one of the reasons that are the reason uh, the main reason why we, uh, when we first found uh, Signature Studios and went there, was because we felt so good taking workshops in that place. Um, the way they respected actors, um, the support that um, the, the 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 whole room had for each other. You didn't feel the competition that you feel in other places. Uh, the cleanliness, the um, it attention was just to a, detail. Attention was, to yeah. detail. It was a classy organization, and that is uh, solely. Uh, uh, because of the uh, the way that Lynn Milano set up Signature Studios in the uh, first place. And it is our goal to maintain the high standards that she started uh, because we know how good we felt when we first went to that studio. And uh, it's, you know, it's an uphill struggle for us every day, but that's what we try to maintain uh, with every workshop that we hold. How do you like that, Lynn Milano? Well, from what I understand... <laughs> right now, their location and their design and what they've put into it, their hard work and attention to detail to make it very nice for both the casting director and the actors. I mean, I'm blown away. I mean, a very, very classy couple. And like I mentioned before, very talented. And um, they are really, really, from the heart, trying to help actors get seen and get work in a very classy way. And Lynn, from speaking from experience, when you created this in 2004, uh, I was one of the people to be lucky enough to get to sign the wall for the opening. And what you <laughs> always, I know, I don't, I, I hate that they took that wall down. I don't know. <laughs> well, you always, you had such a clean, respectful, supportive environment, and you treated everyone like we were your children. You were very protective of us. You provided water. You provided snacks. I mean, if you didn't even need to. Eat eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just go to one of Lynn's <laughs> workshops. And you got fed. All the poor actors, they, ju they just came in droves because she just made them feel so wonderful. I mean, I can't tell you the, the environment that this woman created. And I was very sad to hear that she was stepping aside and passing it on to Jeremy. I don't know what happened. I did not attend workshops with Jeremy. But if uh, – if, uh, uh, these guys are saying that it still held that that mystique that it had when you originally had it. I'm so happy to hear that because what you created was just phenomenal for actors. I still today run into actors who remember you, Lynn Milano, remember you and what you created. And uh, some of them do not even know that. And I didn't know up until recently that Ayumi and Doug had um, create ha, were continuing the workshop. I thought that it just went into oblivion. So I'm glad to hear that they are doing that. Now, Lynn, one of the reasons, and I want to ask you this because one of the reasons people need to go to these casting director workshops is so they can have direct contact with casting directors. Tell us from your own personal experience, because I've seen you on so many things in television. Tell us why it is so important to go to these casting director workshops because I have seen you on God knows so many shows and this is a direct result of being seen in front of casting directors. Tell them why do they need, why do actors need to go to these workshops? Well, number one, uh, I mean, we all know there are many, many actors in L.A., and years ago, you could go in for a, uh, you know, knock on their door, hey, you know, I've got a new picture, this and that, and you can build a little relationship. Well, you can't do that anymore. And the casting director, once you go in and you build a relationship with them, when your agent um, submits you, hey, I know Priscilla, I know Ayumi, Doug, I've seen their work. I want to call them in. And uh, because they've seen your work, they're not worried about bringing you in to their producer. And uh, they know that you're not going to let them down. And it's so important because of the numbers of talent out there and uh, that you build those relationships 
And plus, I do am aware that Ayumi and Doug have the agent night, and I know they have one coming up. I cannot tell you how important it is for an actor. If they want to change their agency or get an agent their first time, those events, many actors that Ayumi and Doug can tell you have gotten representation through them. It's the only way to do it. You get lost in the shuffle. It is. I mean, you can't just go to the agencies anymore. They, no, you go in a circular fall. You're lucky you, to even mm-hmm. see an agent. So you cannot cannot stress how important it is to actually go to the workshops. It, it, it does cost money, but it takes money to make money. So scrap it up, scrape it together, and get to these casting director workshops. And there's so many of them, Lynn. It's so hard to choose. But mm-hmm. what should they what should they look for when they're choosing a casting director workshop in general? In general, number one, I, I think um, I would not go to one that required a membership fee. A membership fee? Absolutely not. Um, There are a lot of uh, workshops in L.A. that bring in casting directors that are not working. Right. Ayumi and Doug and Signature Studios always brought in guests that are working on projects. Now, uh, um, a higher-end client, you know, guest, a CD, they, um, when they're busy with television, they cannot come in. They don't have the time. However, if we can catch them on hiatus, you better come in and see them mm. because you will not have that opportunity when they're working. That is right. That is right. And you yourself have experienced this because you've gone in front of uh, the casting directors doing the workshops yourself, and you were cast directly for many projects. So a lot of people say, oh, I've gone to so many, and I've paid so much money, and I didn't get anything. Well, there's some reasons for that. It's timing, and it's a numbers game. Yes. Everything is timing. Absolutely. And you know that you can see a casting director, say, in 2012, but you might hear from them in 2014. It's That's not always immediate. That is right. That is exactly You have to be patient. You do. You absolutely do. Now, I know that uh, Doug and uh, Izumi, oh, Jesus, God, Ayumi are trying to maintain, and I think that they're doing a pretty good job of it from what you say. They're trying to maintain the core goals of the studio uh, that you instilled, and they're also looking for ways to improve on what you started. And I, I definitely want to hear about that because they apparently have come up with a new motto, learn, network, succeed. And they believe that it's important to help actors connect uh, this way through and get success through this way. And so that is why this motto led to their new name and location. Uh, and they moved there. And how has it been for you guys since you opened in December of 2011? Because now, instead of it being Signature Studios LA, it's Connect Studios LA. And this new location, the, I think the new location is only less than a mile from the old studio. Were That's you right. able to bring the same people that were going to Lynn's studio? Were you able to migrate them over? Yeah, we were. Uh, there. I mean, she was able to create such a great place that people uh, felt a lot of loyalty towards the studio and, and comfort in uh, performing in front of each other because it was such an, a supportive environment. So it was that wasn't difficult at all. And, yeah, Lynn definitely created a warm, supportive environment. And did you maintain uh, all of the things that she did, like, with the waters? I I remember how impressive I was (laughs) with the gumballs and things like that. I don't know how she kept that up because that stuff is expensive. But she she knew how important that was to give herself the little extra edge over the other studios where you can't – you have to walk three miles to get a water. So uh, what have you done to – expand on what she created and how how is your workshop different than all the other ones what what have you done well we've we've maintained the water and we've maintained each other <laughs> and the pretzels yeah. um, so that's a good thing we um we've also in- included a few new options for actors as well we created a monthly pass for yeah 
actors who um, don't want to just target, but want to get us, want to meet as many people as possible. You know, acting is a business, and and some actors forget that it's a business, and that we do need to invest in our in in our work, basically, and in our careers. Um, and so we we found that this monthly pass allows people to just meet as many people as possible, get them really comfortable in doing the workshops for ourselves, since we've been able to attend all the workshops. We've always been surprised by the people that end up calling us in. You know, if we had a targeted approach, as, as some actors like to do, they try to pick the CDs that might be right for them. Um, we've always been surprised by the, the CDs who actually end up calling us in for projects that we wouldn't have imagined being called in for. Yes. And you're, it's a, sort of like a little discount program. It's called All You Can Workshop. And uh, this monthly pass, it'll strengthen your skills by learning from all the casting directors you can in one month for a low price. I think that's a brilliant idea. Uh, Lynn, what do you think about that? Isn't that a great idea? I think it's fantastic, and uh, they're offering a lot of wonderful things. In fact, Ayumi and Doug took it even further. They've got a kitchen. What? Oh, home cooking. We we for agent nights we try to you yeah. know it, it increases our ability to uh, put out more impressive foods. Yeah, you never know when you're going to show up and there might be some Spanakopita out there for you. You never know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Spanakopita, where's the sushi and the little – where's the sushi at? Do you do some sushi over there? Well, we definitely can. We have a fridge to keep it cool. Oh, now now you got to put something on your website where you're going to take online orders. <laughs> I think we've opened that door up for sure. Oh, my God. So I think that that's always great to keep adding uh, new things, new incentives for actors to come in because Lynn just really, really set the bar so high. And I'm so glad that you guys are maintaining that because she was the epitome of what a casting director workshop should be. And with you guys maintaining that, I would imagine that you've had great success. What, what, uh, well, they surpassed it. I'm, oh, yeah. Wow. Yes. Well, that's what you're supposed oh. to do as the child, right? right? You're supposed to surpass the parent. <laughs> so it's sort of like the child took over and surpassed. What else do you guys offer? We do uh, improv workshops as well. Both of us have uh, extensive Second City training. We teach at uh, both uh, the Second City in Toronto, yeah. and uh, Doug continues to teach Second City Hollywood. So. And uh, I was a member, and uh, Yumi was a member. We're both members of uh, Second City. Um, I was part of the main stage class, and she was part of the National Touring Company. So we have also got professional experience performing with Second City for years and years. So um, we bring some of that um to our uh, improv classes. And also because we're both working actors, we have tried to um, design our improv workshops, uh, not to turn people into improvisers, but to help them to become better actors and to start to see that there's a, a lot of similarity between an improviser and an actor. Um, we just kind of come at the script from different ways. Improvisers don't have scripts. Uh, actors have scripts, but you have to make your moments real, uh, and a lot of the same techniques can can help that. And more and more, the casting directors are looking for improv training on resumes as one of the the main um, disciplines of study for actors. Absolutely. Cold reading workshops are so, so important. I, I, improv is so important because a lot of times, I mean, come on, let's face it, things happen on the set. You better be able to improv and not stand there like a deer in the headlights because that's going to say that you're inexperienced. So mm -hmm. you have to be able to, what do they call that? Is it bundle? Bundle your skills. You have to have lots of skills. Just like on Broadway, you have to be a triple, th triple threat. Well, you have to be a triple threat out here too, right? That's right. Yeah, definitely. It's it's uh, it's a business. You want to provide as many opportunities for your clients as possible. Absolutely. And I understand that uh, now as much as people would flock to Lynn Milano's studios, one of the problems we had was parking. And I understand that you have a huge parking lot, which is the first thing when I say, oh, you should go to this studio. They say, 
do, where's the parking? Do they have parking? And that's like a main question. It's even a question that comes up before how much are the classes? So that seems to be very important. Tell us about the parking situation over there. Well, this was one of the big draws of our new location. Uh, there is a parking structure right across the street dedicated to our actors um, for evenings and weekends. And, and it's all free parking. You just let the attendant know you're with Connect Studios and in you go. Now, so you don't have to pay anything? It's free? It's covered by the studio. What? Oh, my God. They give water. They're whipping up sushi. And now they give free parking. What else do they want? What do you want? You want us to bring an ambulance and carry you there while you lay there? you got to go there just for that. We're thinking and of offering free puppies, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. Lynn Milano, so you have since moved to Arizona. You're you're kind of not bi-coastal, but bi-statal, we'll say. Um, are you going to be coming back to uh, Los Angeles to join the acting pool, or have we lost you to the dry desert cactus state? Oh, you mean the state where I'd walk out in the yard and see a rattlesnake and see the coyotes? And uh, in fact, last week I saw a bobcat. But uh, no, um, absolutely not. I've always had a place here in Arizona anyway, and I'll always have a little place out there in LA. Well, you so, know, what? I mean, it's a quick drive, it's a quick flight. Well, you it's know, it's not a problem. People who are living in Arizona, you know where to send them now. You know where to send them to uh, to your protege here uh, to connect studios, connect studios LA. And how is that gorgeous hunk of a husband that you have? Where is Larry? Where is my Larry? Oh, I thought you were referring to Bentley. No. <laughs> You know, I always tried to steal your husband away from you. He is just one gorgeous hunk doing, of man. He's doing fantastic. Thank um, you for asking. And, and your daughter, is she still in L.A. or is she in Arizona? Uh, she's in Arizona, too. We're okay. commuting back and forth. Well, I... So, yeah, I, we have, uh, you know, I've got two grandchildren, and uh, so we're having a lot of fun. Well, I'm glad, and I want to thank you so, so much for calling in and surprising uh, Ayumi and Doug today. I think it was a big, big surprise. I'm glad that they enjoyed it, and I will not keep you any longer. I know you got things to do. You were always doing a million things mm -hmm. in, at one time, so I want to thank you so much for calling in. And when you're in L.A. again, I would love to bring you into the studio, and let's do a full interview with you and bring your husband. <laughs> oh, oh, that's part of the deal. Okay. Uh, will Albert be there? <laughs> yes, Albert will be there. Yeah, yeah, I've had enough time with him. Bring Larry and you can have Albert. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it back to those well, days. I Love just want to tell Ayumi and Doug they've done a fantastic job, and they should be very proud. I'm very proud of both of them. Thank you so, so much. So I think great pride in what they've done. I, I'm very honored. Uh, thank you so much. And we're so grateful for you to, to, uh, for all you've done for us. And, uh, you helped us out so much when we were first starting to learn the ropes here and, and, uh, we appreciate it and are so thankful. Yeah. And take care everyone. And we shall talk again. Goodbye. My gorgeous, lovely Lynn Milano, the one, the only Lynn Milano that I have ever or would ever want to meet. You are the ultimate in renaissance and beauty. And you're right. Uh, Larry is uh, quite sexy. Oh, he is, isn't he? All right. <laughs> So we are. We have a couple minutes left. What I want to uh, talk about now is give some. I want to give some career advice. Let's get back to the career advice for people pursuing a career in entertainment in general. General, I know that uh, some of the advice that you had offered was to be persistent and be prepared, and you never know when it'll be your time. And when it is, make sure you're ready. Tell us about that. Tell expand on that for the actors. What do you mean by that? Well, I think uh, the the amazing thing about being in L.A. is you just don't know when your time is, when that opportunity is going to come knocking. So you want to make sure that you're not sitting on your thumbs when that happens. You want to make sure that you have the training, you have um, the ability to to do the work when your your opportunity arises. So I think that instead of just sort of waiting around, 
constantly be training, constantly be learning from people, networking with people, seeing shows, being in shows, doing work and being so involved in the business so that um, it, it doesn't become surprising so that that one audition doesn't become everything. It just becomes part of the routine so that auditioning just becomes a part of the career choice that you've made. I agree. I think meet as many people as you can, work with as many people as you can. Um, you never know uh, where you're going to find someone that you really click with or you never know who's going to become the next big director, the next big writer. Who, and um, uh, if, you, if you meet these people and you work well with them, it gives you a little bit of heads up. You know, and I always tell my that when I teach improvisers, I say, get yourself on stage every chance you can. Work all the time um, because it's really the only – you can learn in class, definitely, but you really learn quickly when you're in front of an audience doing your craft. Um, so find yourself opportunities to perform, whether it be for no pay uh, or for very little pay, especially when you're starting out because that's um, super important. So no. just yeah, find work wherever you can. Are you are you uh, by first trade? Are you a a stand up comedian or? Is I would say uh, I'm an improviser. I, I basically for the last almost thirty years I've been making my living somehow through improvisation, whether it be performing or teaching or directing, um, doing sketch comedy. Um, and the first gig I got, first sort of professional gig I got, um, I found it because the guys that I was working with, we went through the phone book, found a bar that we could perform in. Um, just went alphabetically through the list until we found a bar that would, uh, would hire us. And we did. And that started the whole thing. I love that. Now, what can you explain to the audience the difference between being a stand up comedian and being someone who does improv and sketch comedy? Yeah, uh, well, a stand-up com comedian is a lone gun, so they're going to do. They're going to be up there by themselves, and so they have a lot of obligation to bring the, bring the party to the room. Uh, you're probably going to have material that you uh, are familiar with and know well, and you will use that routine over and over again, uh, or use that material uh, repeatedly. Where every time an improviser takes the stage, and 98% um, of the improvisers work in groups. Um, everything that's happening is happening right there on the spot, spontaneously based on suggestions they get from the audience. Uh, so the whole room gets to discover um, the material at the same time, both the audience and the performers. So that's basically the big thing. So you need, so you actually need to uh, go to that workshop on August 9th to get in front of Michael Torbiak because that's what <laughs> You know, that's what he's doing, right? He's hiring people to be on Jimmy Kimmel Live. So at people, as I was telling you earlier, advertising that workshop at Actors West, Michael Torbiak uh, is one of the people who cast people like Doug to come on and do sketch comedy bits. And we so, both actually worked for Jimmy Kimmel Live. Oh, you did! You've already done that. How was yep. it? So why don't we why don't we see how it was? So we can encourage people to go to the workshop. How how did that work out? Working on Jimmy, Jimmy. Hi. It's great because um, you you get the call sort of early, late late morning, early afternoon, and you need to be on set an hour or so later, and uh, then you're you're doing the bit, and it's just a few hours of work. It's a really fun environment. Um, it's very professional. You and but you again. Here's an instance where you need to be ready. You need to be prepared because uh, most of the time you're not auditioning. They're just calling to check your availability, and then you're you're performing that day. Absolutely. Now let's talk briefly about uh, how you said they call you at night, which is very common. People, you will get a call late, late at night sometimes. So when you choose. I don't even know if you we, we'll touch on this very briefly, because one of the thing, one of the questions that I get so very often is if I move to L.A., what type of job do I get to supplement my income uh, with things that happen like this? As an actor, you have to always be available. It's very hard for a lot of people. They come out here, they try it, they cannot support themselves and they go back. What advice do you have as to what type of jobs people can get? to supplement their income, but yet be available for the auditions. 
I think they just have to find a job and an employer who's very understanding and has flexible hours. People um, tend to work night shifts or waitering jobs that are on weekends to keep their weekdays free for auditioning and for bookings. Again, with the Jimmy Kimmel Live, they actually call you same day most of the time for your bookings. Mm. Yeah, so I, I would say 98% of the work is going to come in the daytime, you know, so most of your appointments rather. So if you, you're probably a little safer if you have work at night, so whether you're a bartender or a waiter, um, cat burglar, uh, <laughs> any of those things you should do. Hey, well. I actually think you have to be a cat burglar to afford <laughs> stuff out here in L.A., my God. <laughs> my, uh, between, uh, okay, so what is your advice to, uh, all right, someone comes right off the little Greyhound bus. What is, take us through what you either, uh, and you can go back and forth on this, uh, what you would recommend the first thing the actor does, the second thing, and the third thing in order to start their career in the world of acting. I think the first thing to do is make sure they have a way to make a living. Because if you're hungry, it, it becomes very difficult uh, to get to an audition if you were starving. So I think make sure that you're fed and have a roof over your head. Uh, so or a sugar daddy. That always helps. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so that would probably be number one. The yeah. num Number two would be um, get yourself into casting director workshops. The assumption is you're here because you have talent. So you've hopefully been training already. So continue to bring your talents. Um, get to meet as many people as you can. And then three, continue your training. So make sure you're taking improv classes, whether it be at Second City or, you know, if you want to take acting classes with specific coaches. I mean, LA is fantastic because you have the best acting teachers that are here from around the world teaching uh, teaching the craft. So there's no excuse for not being able to train with really great people. It does take money, people. You can't think you're going to come out here with 50 bucks in your pocket and that's going to support you. It's very, very hard. So you have to do a lot of research before and figure it out. If you could call and try to get a job before you come out here, or if you know a relative that'll put you up, just don't come out here and because there are a lot of vultures and some very bad people that hang out at the bus stop and the train stop, believe it or not. And especially if you're a, a young girl, uh, very, very bad situations can happen to you. So I want to caution you against that. So try to have a nest egg before you come out here and have the support of your family or a family member or even a friend because if you come out here and something happens and you don't have any friends out here you need a support system don't just come randomly i have seen a lot of bad things happen so um make sure you have that and uh let's talk briefly about headshots so many people photographers they charge anywhere from I think I've seen the lowest at 150 to on up what is your recommendation because people who come out here who don't know anyone I always say look at a headshot that you like and then find out who it is and if it's a lot start saving if it's not but just because the people charge a lot of money does not mean they are the best headshot photographers what has been your experience with the whole headshot thing because they do need to start getting headshots when they come out here yeah we've we've heard you know hundreds of opinions on headshots because we that, that's a question that often comes up at our workshops we've heard anything from uh, be really specific about the type of looks that you're in the type of roles you're going for for and make it very easy for the casting director to be able to picture you on set in that role. Uh, make sure your headshot is just a headshot, no more three-quarter body shots because you're looking at a hundred little images on one screen. You want to make sure that you're just really focusing on the face. Um, the second thing we've heard recently is have a friend with a great digital camera just take 10,000 pictures of you. Uh, and of those thousands of pictures, one of those. One of them has got to make it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, with it, with Photoshop, there's no reason why you can't just shop it up. I mean, you don't want to shop it up too much, but if you have a friend take it, then at least he could make the background look presentable. So mm -hmm. if you yeah. don't have any money, you know, you could you could get a digital camera. That's what a lot of photographers are actually doing. I, I've, I've heard the ones that charge 150, they just have a digital photographer, I mean, a digital camera, and they just take 
the picture and they don't actually have any experience. So, you know, don't just say, oh, all I have is a <clears throat> little amount of money and I need to go with whoever. You know, you can get your friend to do it for free and, and make it look good. So, And if it, if it doesn't work, you've just had a fun afternoon with a friend. So That's right. Absolutely. Uh, we got one more question. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, you hear this all the time being in the workshops. What are the casting director's three biggest pet peeves? And we have about uh, one minute. Uh, people who aren't ready or prepared. They, they flake out at the audition. Either they, a, they're late or they don't show up, which is really disrespectful to the, the uh, thousands of actors who are ready and would have loved to have that spot. I think that's one huge pet peeve. Yeah, people who try to um, talk too much and build a friendship before they read. Like um, uh, the casting directors are busy people, and they like professional actors who come in and do their work. They're prepared, as Ayumi said, and, and hit their audition. They want you to get the job. That's why they brought you in. So yes. uh, be ready to do it. So, no, and no. Uh, don't glad hand. and, and oh, you know, uh, That is so right, dog. Them. Doug, I am so glad you said that. We are going to end the show with that. Don't try to brown nose. Don't ramble. Don't try to be their friend because if you do, you're going to get the vibe. I call it the vibe, and that means they're <laughs> going to look. They're going to make you feel very awkward and uncomfortable, and you're going to feel embarrassed because you're going to feel like you just got blown off. Well, you know what you did because. <laughs> It makes them feel awkward and uncomfortable because they don't want to treat you better than they have to treat anybody else in the class because they're really not – they don't want to show favoritism. So wait until you've worked up your resume and that you are a very, very good actor, and then they'll come to you. And if they want to schmooze with you, let it happen. All right. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Well, I want to thank you so much, both of you, for coming on. You have just given such great advice, so many tips, resource information. Everything was packed in today. I really hope the audience enjoyed you as much as I did. And I would love to have you guys back on next year. Um, maybe you can come into the studio this time, and we will um, – we will definitely have a fun time because I'm dying to meet you. And you can be sure that I am going to refer everyone to Connect Studios LA. You want to go to their website, connectstudiosla.com. I imagine they have upcoming classes on there with the casting directors. Am I correct? I hope you I'm are not correct. We do. Yeah. So you can go to their website, check out all of their classes, look at how much it costs. It's, it doesn't matter what it costs. It do your research, look at the casting director, go to IMDb, see what projects they have. If that's for you, whether it's voiceover, whether it's comedy, age at night, etc., then you make your decision. But I would check out Connect Studios LA first before anything, because if they're following Lynn Milano's path, then it is going to be a wonderful environment. Absolutely. Am I right or am I right? As you, you mean, Doug. You are right. You are so you. right. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. And remember, they take on food orders okay no they don't but, all right uh, they might they might if, uh, it depends how big they get i say take your idea and go back to canada because in the beginning of the show you said they don't have anything like that take lynn's idea mesh with your idea go back to canada and open up a casting director workshop have people flock to you you'll be millionaires you won't even be an actor anymore you'll just you'll be chilling out with lynn in arizona okay uh again people next week we're gonna have pisha mcphee both Local coach on American Idol and mother of the multi-talented Catherine McPhee, along with Michael Orland, who is the musical director, associate music director on American Idol. They are going to be on here to tell you all about their new, 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 new website. Um, and so you don't want to miss that. Thank you guys for coming on. Say goodbye to your fans because I'm sure you've gotten fans today. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. You're, you've got a great show. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Doug, you want to leave us with something hot and happening? Goodbye, America. I'll be thinking about you tonight. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week on Question Reality. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio.